The infantry squad is the most basic tactical unit the player will use on the combat mission battlefield. The purpose of the infantry is to engage and destroy the enemy by use of close combat. The steps of close combat can be described using the four F's. Find the enemy. Fix him with fire. Flank him. And finish him. One of the most important parts of the infantry's job is that of locating and identifying enemy positions. This is important in order to be able to call supporting fires on identified positions, and also to prevent your own forces from being caught in an enemy ambush. In combat mission, infantry, especially scout and sniper teams, have the highest spotting abilities while still being able to remain undetected. A common maxim found in the community is, never send a squad anywhere a scout team hasn't been. The most common method of moving to contact is to detach a two-man scout team and to move them out in front of the squad. The idea is to give them a chance to observe an area before the rest of the squad arrives. And if they happen to walk into an ambush, you only have two men in danger rather than all of them. When scouting for the enemy, taking time to spot targets and using short cover arcs to prevent your team from firing are very important. This will give your team a chance to spot hidden enemy units and will prevent them from giving away their position by firing on anything they spot. Once you have found the enemy, the first thing you should do is to gain fire superiority over him. You will be unable to maneuver unless you can effectively suppress him. Depending on his position and the effectiveness of your fire, use either area target or direct fire to engage him. Area fire will target the spot being occupied by the enemy and enable greater saturation of fire. Direct targeting will consume less ammunition but your soldiers will only fire if they can see the enemy. One indirect advantage of direct targeting is that your soldiers will continue to wait for the enemy to appear even if the enemy moves out of their position and if the team loses contact temporarily. Available supporting weapons should also be used. When the enemy is effectively suppressed, you will be unable to effectively return fire and you will be free to maneuver against him. It may take several minutes to build up an effective volume of fire. And the best indication the enemy is sufficiently suppressed will be the lack of return fire. However, fanatical enemies will sometimes refuse to be pinned down, no matter how much you try. Maneuverability is the key to close combat. Remaining stationary is only inviting the enemy to destroy your own forces.
The easiest way to destroy the enemy is to engage him from a position where he is most exposed to your fire. If the enemy is dug in behind a wall, for example, moving to the side will effectively neutralize that cover. Using an elevated position, a reverse slope, or hard cover of your own can also be effective. Splitting off an assault team from your squad will give you a small, quick team armed with lots of grenades and any submachine guns available. The assault team is the team of choice for close assaulting the enemy. Once you have gained an advantageous position over the enemy, the final step is to focus all available firepower on the enemy in order to eliminate him as quickly as possible. Submachine guns, carbines, automatic rifles, and hand grenades are very effective at this stage. While your assaulting team will throw hand grenades at short ranges automatically, you can force them to grenade a position by using an area target at ranges of 24 meters or less. When the operational situation dictates that your forces are acting defensively, you must still seek to exercise the principles of close combat. Remaining stationary or passive, even when on the defensive, will only result in the enemy exercising close combat against your own forces or bombarding you with supporting weapons. When necessary to prevent enemy forces from controlling a piece of ground, seek to maneuver against the enemy and destroy him, even if it becomes necessary to temporarily surrender ground in order to destroy the enemy. Splitting your squad into assault and base of fire teams, placing your automatic weapons on the most likely approach route, and using your assault team to spot and maneuver against the enemy are all features of close combat on the defensive. Laying an ambush for the enemy is also useful by placing a cover arc along the possible approach route and ordering your teams to hide.
ihn jemand sehen? The infantry squad can also make use of additional supporting weapons, mostly including machine guns, mortars, and anti-tank weapons. Machine guns are most commonly used as a base of fire, replacing the squad's own light machine gun, which allows additional freedom of maneuver or the ability to place suppressing fire in more than one direction. Mortars are most commonly used to destroy and suppress fortified enemy positions and are very effective against dug-in entrenched infantry and other fortified positions such as wooden bunkers and light buildings. Anti-tank weapons consist of several types, including hand-thrown, rifle grenade, rocket-propelled, mines, etc. Unguided short-range munitions are best used in ambush or as part of a deliberate close assault. Using an armored target arc will enable you to restrict your anti-tank team's fire to armored targets only and allow you to lay an ambush for enemy vehicles without giving away your position. The infantry's primary role is to engage and destroy the enemy in close combat. Infantry has the best spotting ability while still remaining undetected. Maneuverability is key to infantry action. Even on the defensive, you must still seek to maneuver against the enemy wherever possible. Supporting weapons are an effective force multiplier. <laughs> 